Very, very good morning from Finland. Oikein hyvää huomenta kaikille. And warmly welcome into our uh, morning meditation. And um, is this now the third day? Ja tämä on nähtävästi meidän kolmas päivä nyt täällä uh, festivaaliviikon päivistä. Today we are going to talk a lot about um, Maha Chohan. Tänä päivänä puhumme paljon Maha Chohanista. And um, uh, he is, as we can think, all the, desire, uh, all the masters, but Maha Chohan is very important for, for the group of the new group, group of world servers. He is behind all these activities and distributions. Hän on erittäin tärkeä sen tähden koko tälle ryhmälle, koska hän on kaiken jakamisen takana. And here we see this um, uh, symbolic network uh, image on the screen. When we think about the work of the group and all its little, little details and particles, the units, how they have to be put together. So all that is um, related to the great third ray. Kaikki nuo pienet yksityiskohdat, kuinka ne liittyvät toisiinsa, liittyy kolmanteen säteeseen. But in our circles, we are not very often talking about the Holy Spirit. And that is um, the active, creative intelligence, the third aspect of divinity, Holy Spirit. Hyvin harvoin puhumme meidän piireissämme pyhästä hengestä, joka kuitenkin on tuo, joka liittyy kolmanteen jumalalliseen aspektiin. Because it is the eve of the Christmas Eve. Hard to believe now where we are. The climate change has hit us again, so we do not have any single drop of or flake of snow or how you say in English. Meillä ei todellakaan ole yhtään tällä etelässä lunta. Uh, and uh, for us in the north, the snow is so integral part of feeling the Christmas. So this is like just whatever day in autumn, busy autumn days, but no, it is the eve of the Christmas Eve. So Merry Merry Christmas to everybody. Ja nythän me elämme jo aaton aattoa. 
And that's why today also we, in in our meditation, we align with the Holy Spirit. Uh, this something what is still unknown to us, and yet it should become known. Tuo, joka on meille tuntematonta ja kuitenkin sen tulisi olla tunnettua. The birth is taking under the Holy Spirit. These two initiations uh, upon the threshold, the first and the second, are still so much under the third aspect, the Holy Spirit aspect. But we don't think about it. It's the mother. The mother aspect is taking us into into this uh, uh, path of uh, purification, into these first steps, going through into the kingdom of souls. Ja pyhä henki kaitsee meitä noiden ensimmäisten askeleiden aikana. Uh, when we think about the idea of the spiritual peace, the that is something uh, which is related to energetically to Holy Spirit, even though it is related uh, spirit or peace itself is related to the uh, second aspect. Ja vaikkakin pyhä henki liitetään oikeasti toiseen aspektiin, mutta läsnäolo on hyvin uh, pyhän hengin kaltainen. So um, I was thinking that we could have been having our ringing bells. Do you have your bells with you? We ring for a while bells for you. You can you can start. And one minute silence.
Now we will listen something about what Master DK has been writing upon Mahachohan. And let us meditate at the same time. Kuulemme nyt englanniksi, mitä Mr. DK on kirjoittanut Mahachohanista. You can see that the hierarchy itself is only a great ashram with a triangle at the center composed of the Christ, the Mahachohan and the Manu. Symbolically speaking, this triangle constitutes one radiant center for the radiatory activity of each of these great lords is such that they are swept into each other's auras in such a way that there is a complete blending and fusing. Every ashram radiates some one major quality according to the ray of the master at the center. In the same way, the hierarchy radiates the quality of the second divine aspect, just as the all-inclusive ashram to which we give the name Shambhala. As the outstanding characteristic of the first aspect, life itself, this is not a quality, but that of which quality is an emanation. We can align with those great centers, which we call ashrams, hierarchy, which is constituted by seven ashrams. And now, from that angle, how they are actively cr connected with each other. DK says, the busiest of the ashrams is now Mahajohan's ashram, because he is the one who is helping now with all these preparations going on on earth. And this time when we are under the influence of the Capricorn, through Capricorn pours in very strongly third ray. That's why Capricorn is also very strongly related to the Holy Spirit. And Saturn, which is a focal point for these descending energies via Saturn, pours in the third ray. Mahachohan is also called the Lord of Civilization. The present Mahachohan is Master R. Rakochi. So the group three has as its head the Mahachohan. His rule over the group persists for a longer period than that of his two brothers, and he may hold office for the term of several root races. 
He is the sum total of the intelligence aspect. The present Mahachohan is not the original one who held the office at the founding of the hierarchy in Lemurian days. It was then held by one of the Kumaras, or Lords of the Flame, who came into incarnation with Sanat Kumara, or Lords of the Flame, who came into, I am sorry, with uh, Sanat Kumara, but he took hold of his position during the second sub race of the Atlantean root race. He had achieved adeptship on the moon chain and it was through his instrumentality that a large number of the present more advanced human beings came into incarnation in the middle of the Atlantean root race. Karmic affiliation with him was one of the predisposing causes, thus making this eventuality, eventuality possible. His work concerns itself with the fostering and strengthening of that relation between spirit and matter, life and form, the self and the not-self which results in what we call civilization. He manipulates the forces of nature and is largely the emanating source of electrical energy as we know it. Being the reflection of the third or creative aspect, energy from the planetary logos flows to him from the throat center, and he it is who in many ways makes the work of his brothers possible. Their plans and desires are submitted to him, and through him the instructions to a larger number of the Deva agents. Thus you have will, love and intelligence presented in these three great lords. You have the self, the not-self and the relation between synthesized in the unity of manifestation. You have racial government, religion and civilization forming a coherent whole and you have physical manifestation, the love or desire aspect and the mind of the planetary logos working out into objectivity. The closest cooperation and unity exists between these three personalities and even move and plan and event exist in their united for knowledge. They are in daily touch with the Lord of the world at Shambhala and the entire guidance of affairs rests in their hands and in those of the Manu of the fourth root race. The world teacher holds office in connection with both the fourth and the fifth truth races. Each of these departmental heads directs a number of subsidiary offices, and the department of the Mahachohan is divided into five divisions so as to take in the four lesser aspects of hierarchical rule. And that is why we have five fingers and five toes, two hands and then two legs making this um, in the four connectiveness.
Under the Manu work the regions of the different world divisions, such as, for instance, the Master Jupiter, the oldest of the masters now working in physical bodies for humanity, who is the regent for India, and the master Rakotchi, who is the regent for Europe and America. So here we see this um, Rakotchi's work, uh, which is um, we don't know what kind of turn it is now taking the movements in Europe and the movements in America. So he is behind all the plan of United Nations. That's why for us it is one of the key things trying to work into the mental field the way that this uh, energies, this understanding could descend because we must stand now for unity. Every nation are like individuals in the group and when you think about the group formation it's uh, important that every single group blends with the group. We are not living anymore the time of individual units, not individual nations. No nation can direct the others because we have come to the time that this, it is the whole humanity who has to be uplifted. And that's why the work of uh, Maha Chohan is so very, very important at this time. And huge impulses are coming from his, from his directions and the disciples, even though the disciple would not be under that ray, but we has to learn to work with these creative intelligent aspects in its uh, more beneficial form. So he says, it must be remembered here that though the Master R, for instance, belongs to the seventh ray and thus comes under the department of the energy of the Mahajohan. Yet in hierarchical work he may and does hold office temporarily under the Manu. These regions hold in their hands the reins of government for continents and nations, thus guiding, even if unknown, their destinies. They impress and inspire statesmen and rulers. They pour forth mental energy in governing groups, thus bringing about the desired results wherever cooperation and receptive intuition can be found among the thinkers. The world teacher presides over the destiny of the great religions through the medium of a group of masters and initiates who direct the activities of these different schools of thought. In illustration, the Master Jesus, the inspirer and director of the Christian churches everywhere, though an adept on the sixth ray under the department of the Mahachohan, works at present under the Christ for the welfare of Christianity. Other masters hold similar posts in relation to the great Oriental faiths and the various Occidental schools of thought. In the department of the Mahachohan, a larger number of masters in fivefold division work in connection with the Deva evolution and with the intelligence aspect in man. Their divisions follow those of the four minor rays of attribute, the ray of harmony or beauty, the ray of concrete science or knowledge, the ray of devotion or abstract idealism, the ray of ceremonial law or magic, just as the three departmental heads presented the three major rays of will or power, 
love or wisdom, active intelligence or adaptability. The four rays of attributes of mind with the third ray of intelligence as synthesized by the Mahachohan make up the sum total of the fifth principle of manas or mind. I think it is very refreshing every now and then listen Master DK's words about the masters, what they are doing. So now we align with the Mahachohan, the Lord of Civilization. Behind everything is the Lord of the Lords, the Lord of the world, Sanat Kumara. And as we heard, every day these three great Lords are connected with Sanat Kumara. And the distribution of uh, these impulses are directed by Mahachohan. Try to have a living realization of this structure, of the hierarchical structure How the distribution of energies descends from the highest center via the Christ into hierarchy, Mahachohan directing it along the four lines, and then the new group of world servers. And what is your role in that whole structure? What does it mean to you, civilization? Are you inspired if you think about different human races and the states that our humanity is in. What does it mean, the new civilization? What kind of human is a new human being on earth? So via the department of Mahachohan pours in these new energies refreshing life energies from Shambhala. Can you, can you touch these energies? Can you recognize these energies? The new impulses from Shambhala. which is going to build the new civilization.
and as a group, aligning with the larger group and trying to really be alert and send forth the vision for humanity. Following these new impulses from the highest center from Shambhala. Recognizing how they are distributed by Mahachohan. The mother who is building, giving the birth to new civilization and the Christ for us, the prototype for that. And tomorrow we have the Christmas Eve where we celebrate the new civilization which is born. So
So this is a Finnish song which is telling about uh, being with the angels. And the last words, are, there are some steps, but the last words is, or are, that the Christmas would never end. Ja kuten kuulitte, tämä mä kanssa enkeltein loppuu tuohon ää, toteamukseen, että joulu ei lopu koskaan. The Christmas, when we tune into the real energy of Christmas, is telling us about the quality of the new civilization. Joulu itse asiassa kertoo laadullisesti meille uudesta sivilisaatiosta. The quality of the Holy Spirit, when you can tune in what it is, that is about the quality of the new civilization, the new world. It consists the peace, it has love. And it has tremendous goodwill. Siinä on rauha ja rakkaus ja uskomattoman suuri hyvä tahto. So let us all tune in that and breathe within, deep it, deeply breathing it into existence. The Christ born among humanity was the beginning of the new civilization. So whenever we go and see a newborn baby and we tune in to this sacredness which is around the newborn born baby and, uh, and also with pregnant women, that is about new civilization. So we can Rejoice because the new civilization is here, already on the way. And now, dearest friends, we will close our uh, 
a meditation, morning meditation. We welcome you back with us at 8.30 a.m. GMT. And then we continue discussing about uh, upon the new group of world uh, service and Mahacho and the Lord of Civilization. We welcome you then and uh, until that moment. He jatkamme kello 10.30 opiskelemalla uh, lisää Herra Sivilisaatiosta ja toivotamme teidät tervetulleeksi. And namaste.